Hey guys, Garage Max out here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on installing a brake controller in the Range Rover Sport and LR4. I uh, actually had to do some digging to figure this out, so I figured I'd make a video because it's not super straightforward and the wiring that you need doesn't show up on Amazon or any of the searches as uh, being Range Rover compatible. So what I'm going to be using is the 3035P and a Primus IQ. Uh, there are many options, but essentially this wiring harness is for Ford Super Duties and is going to be plug and play underneath the steering column of your Range Rover or LR4. Uh, and there's just a couple of bolts that you have to remove. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'll zoom in here so you guys can see what I'm doing uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so the panel that we're going to be removing is right here and you guys are going to see a seven millimeter bolt here and one right here. And just so that you guys can confirm you have the right piece, this is the part that's going to go into the port under here, this is the one that's going to go into your brake controller. Before I go ahead and install this, I do want to make one note. I saw a couple of uh, people saying online that you had to repin the Ford connector. The only people that I've seen uh, kind of confirm to have had to do that uh, are overseas. So if you're in the US, I think the US ones are wired uh, appropriately. But if you plug this in and it's not working, the way that the rewire goes is like this. The white pin would go into this top box and the black and the blue would be switched around. Okay, so if, if your truck is one of the ones that requires rewiring, that is what you need to do. White into this top left, and then black and blue switched. Uh, again, I, I think the only ones that I've seen that require that are the ones in Australia and maybe EU. None of the folks in the US that I've seen have had to rewire their trucks. It might be based on year and not region, I'm not sure. Um, but for the most part, everybody's saying that this is plug and play. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay guys, so this is going to be pretty difficult to see. Uh, so all I did was pull down the three bolts and then this thing just kind of falls down, which is fine. Now what, what you need to do if you want to see the connector is uh, get on your back here. So you put your shoulder blades on the back. And I'll just kind of roll around and I'll show you. Okay. So if you look up under here, now this is, this is our brake pedal. I'm sorry, I know it gets pretty dark. This is the brake pedal right there. And you look up past the brake pedal and you can see that gray, that gray connector right there. That gray connector is where you're gonna be plugging into. So I know it's, it's very difficult to see, um, not really a better way to get a camera in here, but that gray connector, if you follow the brake pedal up past the, this armature, that's what we're gonna be plugging into. Okay, so just a pointer on this. Uh, when you go to install this, it really helps if you just reach your arm under there. You don't have to look at it while you're doing it and, and you just feed it up in there. The, the connector has a little T-shaped end, so it'll help you put it in there. Uh, and then all you need to do is decide where you want this cord to come out. I'm probably gonna go through a couple of trials, just kind of towing with it in different locations before I permanently mount it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on this side and just let it feed down like that and then I'll be able to just kind of mock this up with velcro in a few different locations while I decide where it's going to be permanently mounted. So now I'm going to go ahead and just reinstall this piece. So I think what I'm going to do is use these push pins. I'll probably drill two holes in this 
and mount this right up under here or up in here. Again, I'm going to kind of put it in a few locations and see before I do that. But you can use these plastic push pins to make it look very factory uh, with the kit that comes with this Primus. So then all you need to do is plug it in. There you go. Now you've got your brake controller. Okay, I figured I'd uh, add on a little bit more information. Oh, hey there, little lizard. A uh, little bit more information on repinning if you guys need to do that. Uh, essentially, there's a little red button on the side here. And you just push this red button, just like this. Just push it down and it's gonna pop out like that. And once it's popped out, you'll be able to pull the pins out and replace them. So I'll show you that. I need to grab some needle nose pliers here so that we can fully get this red piece out. So if your truck requires uh, a rewire, that's all you need to do. You swap, swap the blue and the black ones and move the white pin from this one up into this top one. And then we'll go ahead and we'll replace this thing. Super easy. Okay, so I've got the panel back up here. Uh, you'll, again, you'll either have repinned re it or not repinned it depending on what your truck needs. Uh, I recommend leaving this panel off until you can figure that out. Um, but yeah, then you just plug it in here uh, for the Primus IQ, it's going to beep with the NC for 15 seconds, uh, but essentially that means we're getting power. Uh, I'm going to just temporarily put this here on, on my truck, uh, just until I can figure out exactly where I want it, um, so that I can test the, the functionality um, with the trailer hooked up. So now I'm going to play with it with the trailer, uh, but that's it. That's all, that's all you need to do. I think, again, I'm, I'll probably mount it here it's got to be somewhere within reach when you're driving uh, so that you can hit the emergency brake if you need to um, so I'm not quite sure which panel I want to drill into to, to mount this I might do velcro I might put it here on this side panel uh, not quite sure yet but we'll uh, we'll figure that out 
I've got it just zip tied here so that I can test some of the functionality with the trailer. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. One more thing, guys. Uh, Land Rover wanted $2,700 to install a hitch on this vehicle. Uh, I was able to pick up this Kurt uh, receiver for, I think, just a little over $200. I did have to go to Land Rover to get the seven pin, uh, and they charge $225 for this, but it is plug and play. Obviously, this is just zip tied right now. I did order uh, a little adapter which is going to mount here which will allow me to permanently mount that plug so it's not dangling here when i'm driving um, so i'll go ahead and mount that uh, but yeah definitely don't pay land rover 2700 bucks unless you want the uh tow functionality on the screen so that backup camera assist tow assist thing uh, you you will need to go through them if you want that but if you're just looking for a brake controller just like you would with like a normal pickup truck uh, you can get this whole setup down here for about 500 bucks uh, plus the brake controller uh, so obviously much much cheaper than from Land Rover thanks for watching